Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel and in this video I'm going to talk about using Gmail as a single stream funnel for all of the electronic information that enters my world. This is part of a series on my ADHD brain and all of the systems that I use to compensate for a lack of internal structure and organization. If you've watched my overview video of my organizational apps, you'll know that I use Gmail as the central funnel through which all electronic data enters my world. Kind of like having one single inbox to check and then to work through. I just was not keeping up well when I had four or five different inboxes to deal with. So let's just walk through what that looks like for each kind of information. First, landline voicemail. Okay, this is archaic and I know a bunch of people who literally never check their landline voicemail. But I have a couple of old school relatives in my life who would be none too pleased if I never responded to their urgent voicemails. Verizon is the provider for my landline service and they offer something called visual voicemail, which for a small monthly fee allows you to have voicemail sent as an audio file attachment to an email address of your choice. It's totally worth it to me to stay in the good graces of said relatives. Next, cell phone voicemail. So I use um, Google Voice to get my cell phone voicemail messages sent to my email. I like this service even better than the one for my landline since Google Voice actually attempts to translate the message into text, um, which saves me a little bit of time since then I don't have to find an opportunity to listen to the audio. I'm going to do a video on how to do this later on since it's kind of complicated. How about conversations and things that just pop into my head? Not exactly electronic information, but you know what I mean. Unfortunately, there's no way to automate this, so I write emails to myself or I use Siri to send myself email reminders like this. Hey Siri, send me an email about Remember to take the chicken out to thaw. Texts. Texts are totally wreaking havoc with my system. It drives me crazy that you can't mark a message unread after you've read it. You know, to just remind yourself to go back in and do it. So because I can't figure out how to do this without jailbreaking my phone, if I get a text that I need to act on, I forward it to my email address. So here's how you do that on an iPhone. Press down on the text bubble that you want to forward until you get an addi additional options. Then choose more. Then choose the forward arrow and type in your email address. Now, if you have your email address set up to receive iMessages on an iPhone, it will boomerang right back to you on text. Um, so turn that off in settings messages, then send and receive. Then your text message should arrive in your inbox as a weird little text attachment. Two other important things. Uh, synchronized email. I have no patience for deleting or filing emails on different platforms. If I delete it on my iPad, I also want it to be deleted on my computer and also on my iPhone. The only way to do this is to use an IMAP email service like Gmail, which synchronizes between devices. If you're using a service that only uses POP3 protocol, you're gonna have to ditch that immediately and switch to an IMAP service. Otherwise, you're wasting a lot of time deleting emails in multiple places. You can keep your current email address just as long as your current email service has a forwarding option, which can be forwarded to your new IMAP service. Most of these do have a forwarding option. The next thing is diverting unwanted emails. So this is a problem that everyone has to deal with. In order to do anything on the internet now, it seems that you have to create an account. And in order to create an account, you need to put in an email address. So some people handle this, um, by using their primary email address and then they filter out the unwanted emails after they get to their inbox. The way I do it is by having a separate email address that I use solely for this purpose. My main Gmail address is sacred, but I have a Yahoo account that I use for online shopping sites, 
reward card programs and a bunch of other stuff that I know will send me spam. I can access my Yahoo inbox online so that I can find, you know, email coupons or um, sales information or if I need to find like a tracking number for a shipment. But that saves my main Gmail account from that torrent of unwanted mail. Okay, so all of that is how email gets to my inbox. What happens next? I commit to getting my inbox to zero every approximately three days or so. I can hear the gasping. Yes, it's possible. In order to start the process, you may have to declare email bankruptcy by deleting all emails prior to a certain date and then letting your friends and coworkers know to reach back out to you if they're waiting for a response, but it can be done. So I do this so that things don't fall through the cracks for me. I need the discipline of going through each email to ensure that I have handled it. There are three options for emails. Delete, file, or act. Delete is easy. So let's talk about filing for a second. I use Gmail, but I don't always file on my computer. Sometimes I file on my mobile devices. You can't create new Gmail save folders from the kind of indigenous iPhone or iPad app, at least as far as I know. So I make them on the computer or in a browser, and then because of IMAP, they sync and appear magically on all the other devices. The world is also sl slowly turning away from the, from the old school Windows file management, kind of folder nested in folder organizational concept, and it's turning towards a more dynamic tagging and keyword approach to document retrieval. In other words, it used to be important for you to remember where you put something, but now you just have to be able to locate it through search terms. So I try to use a fairly flat file system, meaning not too many nested folders and not too granular, and then I make sure that my emails are searchable by subject or by content. Sometimes I'll actually forward an email to myself just to improve the subject line, but Gmail searchability is pretty good. I mean, it is Google after all. Okay, um, that's delete and file. For emails that I have to act on, my rule of thumb is that if I can read, respond to, or act on an email in less than around five minutes, then I'm gonna do that as I'm going through my inbox. Otherwise, the email gets moved um, to somewhere else. For lengthy, non-required reading, I put emails in a to-read folder, which I presumably go through at some point and read. Everything else gets moved to an appropriate file and then turned into a task, like figure out the carpool schedule for field hockey, or respond back to Jennifer about 5K registration, or read article for group meeting. Tasks have dates associated with them, so I can schedule them in the future if they're not pressing and that makes more sense. So look for explainer videos on the systems that I use for task management, lists, and reminders. Um, Follow-up system. If I'm writing an email for which I'm expecting a response, anything from can you guys do dinner on this date or this date to what's your progress on X, Y, and Z to what would your advice be about blah, 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 I always blind copy or BCC myself. So once I've sent it, I get a copy of that email back in my inbox. I then take that email, the one from myself, and I file it in a folder called plus outstanding items. Oh, the plus sign is only because, so that it gets a little bit higher up on the list of alphabetized folders. And then once a week I have a recurring task to follow up on my outstanding items. I also blind copy myself on the follow-ups until I get an answer, at which point I can delete the whole email trail. So this helps me stay on top of things that I've asked and prevents me from shooting out of bed in the middle of the night thinking, I never heard back from so-and-so. So that's it for my single e stream email system. It's not for everyone, but it keeps me from missing events, failing to respond, and generally falling down on my responsibilities. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences in the comment section. And thanks for watching.